everybody. Welcome to today's stream. Uh, thank you for being here a little bit earlier than normal. I know that this is not our normal timing, but what's up? I'm Trisha Hirschberger here today with Maud Garrett. How are you, Maud? Hi. Yeah, thanks, guys. Look, our, our schedules are all over the place, and we're trying to juggle working and having fun and doing all that jazz. So we really appreciate you guys joining us a little bit earlier. If you are watching us live, uh, if you are, tap that follow button. If you want to subscribe, that would be amazing. Trisha would thank you forever for it. Uh, but if you're watching it on Geek Bomb, hey, thank you. Hopefully you've subscribed on that as well. Like, why not? Yeah. Cool. That's all the promo we're going to do for that. We have Power Up and it is a guest episode today. Amy Cassandra Martinez from Geek Bomb will be back running the ship here as well, keeping it tight. Uh, but Trisha and I will be your captain. But the guest that we have on, she's fantastic and amazing. I think we've all collectively known her for years now. Mm -hmm. um, a pop culture and geek culture expert on so many things. And I'm delighted that we have her on the show. Guys, Give it up for Wendy. Wendy! Wendy! Hi! Oh my gosh, that was quite an intro. Thank you so much, ladies. I'm so happy oh. to be here. I've never, ever learned how to say your last name, and I'm personally embarrassed. Wait, I can I give that. my best guess? Go for it. Wendy Lee Zaney. Yep, that's it. You just drop the S and pronounce I've the Z. I've heard it so many times, but then I see it, and it, the disconnect has come in, and I'm like, ah. But thank you. There you go. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Welcome to the show, Wendy. We're so, so happy to have you. Um, please you. tell everybody that's watching this live, listening to this later in podcast form or watching it on Geek Bomb, uh, where they might know you from on the internet if they aren't already huge Wendy fans. Ooh, okay. Well, uh, you probably know me the most from videos on Collider as well as Sideshow. I think I've been in like one Screen Junkies movie fight that one time and I didn't perform that well, so I just like to forget about it. Uh, <laughs> and then on the Movie Couple YouTube channel. Yay! Yeah, uh, and movie fights. Well, you've been doing that for a little bit now, right? The YouTube channel? Yeah. Yeah, it's been, I think we started it under a different name in uh, 2014 and we kind of tried to do a play off our last name. So it was called like Our Zany Life. And then I was kind of looking back at some of the footage and I was like, we're really like 0% zany, so we're changing it. I mean, you got a little, <laughs> got a little place of zany in there. I love that. Them. So for people uh, who don't know who your partner is for that, who is your partner for that show? Oh, his name is Dustin Zany. We've been together for so long. It's like we're coming up to, I think, I forget now. It's like 10 or 11 years we've been together. Wow. He is he is literally, like, if it wasn't for him, I think I would have left California a long time ago. Whoa. True story. Neat. Yeah. We met, okay, this is going to be super nerdy, but it was one of the first auditions I had when I came to L.A. Like, you know, girl with the backpack and all of my clothes in my trunk and a dream. And I went out for this. Just a local, you know, audition. It wasn't like theatrical or, or television or uh, or commercial, but it was for like a kid's birthday entertainer. But the catch was that they would perform sword fights as oh. you know various characters, as a knight or a princess or, or or a pirate. I was like, I want to be a pirate at a kid's party. So I went and auditioned and I got it. And then literally that following week after I got hired, they're like, Hey, we're gonna do this huge photo shoot, just bring whatever costume you have. And I had like very, very limited collection of something like that. So I was kind of trying to gather pieces together. So I walked up to Dustin that night, introduced myself and I was like, could I borrow this? And he was like, yeah, sure. And he essentially was like, you can borrow anything that's like from my pile. And I just started grabbing stuff. And then from there, we just built our friendship. But at the time we were both seeing somebody else. So it took a while. So we built the friendship first and then we got together. That's awesome. And you mentioned uh, being on Movie Fights. I see some people live in chat saying that they were uh, Movie Fights watchers or maybe still are Movie Fights watchers. I forget if they're doing it now or it's sporadic or in seasons or Not something sure. like that. But yes, that uh, show was so stressful. Maude, did you ever do Movie Fights? Yeah, I did Movie Fights I think once or twice. And then I did TV Fights uh, a few more times than that when they had their um, 
subscription service uh, through Roxy. I did a lot of those. Um, but yeah, it is super stressful because you put on the spot. And um, usually with these kind of quiz scenarios, it's like, I'll know the information, but when someone's like going, what is the answer to this? I'm like, all I hear is white noise. I can just like, I'm just not, th and sometimes you'll get it and sometimes you won't. But I remember being up against Roth and uh, she was so amazing that when it was time to be like, all right, Maud, it's your turn. I'm like, why would I bother? I'm <laughs> like, oh. I think already won so Roth <laughs> is incredibly hard to fight against but I so I like got over my fear of movie fights because at least the first half of the show they let you prepare your arguments but then if you yeah. make it into the speed round it's like cool well now I've forgotten the name of every actor and every director and every movie that I've ever seen thank you so much um but Schmodown is the one that I was like I can't touch oh. that with a 10-foot pole that seems so scary to me have either of you ever done Schmodown I used to be on Schmo's semi regularly back in 2014. Uh -huh. So I've kind of done a bunch of things through them, but because it was so long ago, I can't even recall. Wendy, Someone you're shaking. Up. Wendy, you're shaking your head. Yes. If I got a penny for every time somebody asked if the movie couple will compete in the Schmodown, I would uh, not have to worry about finances. But I'm so bad, just like you guys. I'm. I'm I love trivia, but I think I love watching it than being in it because exactly like what Maud said, when somebody is like, what is the answer? You have five seconds and they have the lights on you. There's eight cameras. There's people going, oh, she doesn't know the answer. And I'm just like, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know what my name is. I don't know anything. Yeah. And uh, we actually did one. And I, and I did it because it, it was a free for all and it was a very fun event. And I was helping Christian coordinate it when it was shooting at Collider. He's like, do you want to be be a part of it? And he's like, you know, I can always use use more participants. And I was like, ah, sure, like, why not? And I happened to drew my number, and I had and I was like the very last contestant. And I was like, oh no! And it was <laughs> after a full day of coordinating, getting people on and off stage, making sure everything ran smoothly. I was just like, in the first answer, I was like, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know anything. What's my name? What, what's two plus two? And just completely blinked out. So. <laughs> it was oh, humiliating. That's, that's all so fantastic fun. because we have a pop quiz ready for movies for you guys if you're ready. All right, number one, what are the dying words of Charles Foster Kane and Citizen Kane? I don't know either. Who played Mrs. <laughs> Robinson in The Graduate? I couldn't tell you. No, uh, I just read, read the answer. <laughs> Wait, where are you even getting these questions from right now? He's so quick on it. I just Googled it. What was the first feature-length animated movie ever released? The first no what movie? Yes, when we oh. got a fight. No, Trisha, you lose. You didn't get it at all. If she got it, you could I didn't get even it. hear the oh, question. I'm still yelling. In the Matrix, does Neo take the blue pill or the red pill? 50-50 uh, chance. He takes the blue, blue. pill, right? Oh, I'm going to yell, it doesn't matter. I heard Trisha say blue, and that was wrong. It's the red pill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I made my point. <laughs> yeah, and I've seen The Matrix like six hundred times. I know. Oh, I remember just being in that. I think the only thing that would go through my head is like, "Oh God, I look like an idiot." If people are watching this, they must think I'm the biggest idiot ever. And they're like, "All right, time's up. What did you get?" And I was like, "That I'm an idiot." <laughs> now. <laughs> I've had a conversation about like things similar to this with uh, Jessica Chobot before and we talked about how like there's there's a confidence line that you kind of have to get over before you're okay just being like hey I don't know that and that's okay um, and I don't know that men feel that pressure in the same way that women do where you're like I have to I have to prove that I know everything otherwise people on the internet are going to be like this girl doesn't know anything it's either everything or nothing and there's no in between and I don't know that my guy friends feel that same pressure I feel like they can be like yeah well I don't know anything about this but I know a lot about this and confidently well, like, do that because like, like, it's it's kind of weird because it's like if a guy was to be like you know if the question was something very specific about Doctor Who and they go, I don't watch Doctor Who, um, you know, sometimes the audience would be like, oh, he can't watch everything. But if a woman's like, oh, I don't, I've never seen Doctor Who, then it's like, but you called yourself a nerd. You used to know this. <laughs> oh, that's called a double standard. But you get to the point where you're like, no one person's experience can ever compete with the hive mind that is the internet. Yeah. 
Yeah. So you have to say, um, like, obviously, I have not watched the sheer library of films that everyone watching this video put together has. And that's okay. It's okay. But I will say that while I was yelling at you guys in our random pop quiz, they were getting the answer in the chat. Right, because the internet <laughs> always gets it. Yeah. Oh. I just proved the point though. There you go. It's easy. It's so, so, so easy watching it from the sidelines, being able to have that thought process and not being put on the spot. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Mr. Pulp Fiction in chat says, I loved the Animatrix, Matrix 4 coming to cinemas in 2022 because we were talking about the Matrix. I just wanted to call Ooh. that out to say, yes, the Animatrix is amazing. Good taste. But also, yes. um, Pulp Fiction said, is the blonde woman originally from United Kingdom? No, you got the answer wrong! You never traveled? Sorry. <laughs> Maud is yelling at you in the most loving way possible. Welcome to Power Up, everybody. I'll say that. Uh, so, Wendy, what are you up to now? How is, so you're based in Los Angeles, just like Maud and I. How is sheltering in place going for you now that we're 100 plus days in? Oh, my gosh. I, at first, I was like, oh, staying home, work from home, because we had a, you know, transition from office to work from home. I was like, this is going to be easy. And I didn't realize that working from home gave you a lot of distraction and how many trips I would just make into my kitchen for snacks because I need snacks all day, every day. So now I have tons of boxes of Cheez-Its in my pantry um, mm. and graham crackers and marshmallows. And I, so once quarantine started, I was like, okay, I don't think I want to go out to the store as much. So we try to limit our trips to the store. We limit our takeout. We do it every now and again, just to kind of support the local businesses because I don't want them to close. Um, but it's few and far in between. And I discovered, like rediscovered my love of cooking. Like, I'm just sitting here. I was like, what can I make today? What can I make tomorrow? So I've been cooking and baking a lot and just a lot of cuddle time with my dogs and trying to catch up on my ever growing list of audible books and the ever growing Netflix streaming shows. Falcor and what are the dogs names again? Uh, Falcor and Navi. Navi, not like Avatar, oh, Navi, why? like. Yeah, I like uh, Navi. that's why because yeah. I've Zelda and you've had Navi. We've had that conversation, but for some reason, I got stuck on Falcor because I thought that if Zelda was a boy, that was one of the name options. Ah, that I was yes. going for. Oh, well, good You're name. Correct. I love that. Should yeah. we like, get back into the power portion of Power Up? Or should we start talking about playing? We definitely can. Uh, thank you so much, Wendy for joining us so far on the show. Uh, it's been lovely having you. And yes, let's go ahead and jump into what Wendy is playing, watching, and reading. Stay tuned, everyone. Mm -hmm. 